Yoo-hoo. It's the time for Beckett from China. <laughs> hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. In today's video, we are going to be taking a close look at the new Kinhank game box. But now it seems to be we're having 8K Ultra HD. Yep, they went from 4K all the way up to 8K now. But let's be clear, that is absolutely more of a joke from my side because, you know, this is just such a weird shenanigans with the 4 8K. It's, it's not even running on it. And when it comes to gaming, it's not going to be having 8K support. So it's kind of a weird, but also kind of a deceiving situation. So let's open it up and let's check out what we're getting inside the package. So I thought the Kinhang company was done with those game boxes because we have reached actually the yeah, the most best device that we can get when it comes to the Android boxes. So yeah, this is actually more like a hybrid box. And if you need to be happy with it, uh, I would say check out Linus Tech videos about TV boxes, particularly when it comes to these devices, because there were some weird things going on. However, this is called the TV Game Box or the TV Box Retro Game Console 8K Ultra HD. So the overall construction is very basic that we have seen before. So what it is interesting that this thing comes with the Rock Chip 3528, 4 gigs of RAM, 32 gigabyte of storage. So in here we're having two USB ports, 3.0 and the normal 2.0, an SD card, HDMI out, an AV out, RG45, and an input for the power supply. The power supply that you're using with this one is going to be in 5 volt, 2 amps. Then they have of course the basic, very cheap PlayStation controllers. So let's see what kind of configuration we're having over here. Okay, so we do have two separate dongles. Sometimes they have the configuration of one dongle, two controllers. But this is the overall okay quality or yeah, okay quality to the point they're having normal rubberized joystick. But oh man, the D-pad on this is awful. There's a lot of difference between the resistance on the membrane underneath on the D-pad and the controllers. Yeah, I'm just gonna be honest, they should like stop making these freaking things. So let's check it out while we're getting inside of the package. So the Super Console X8. So that's actually how this thing is called or pronounced. So we're ready to chat chat about all the other parts. So they have this dual system MU Alec and Android. A quick overview. I mean, I like 4.7 plus Android 13, 64 bit OS. And my opinion, don't use Android at all when it comes to the Android boxes and just get an Nvidia Shield or some kind if you just want to use an Android box or a Fire Stick if, if, if you want to have something reliable. But besides that, in here we're having some overview. So I'm curious, what are we getting with this? How is the overall performance now? So let's grab one of these cheap controllers. Let's slap in some batteries because we're going to be needing two AAA. Let's get my bucket of rechargeable batteries. Let's fit two of them in. Let's lock and load. Let's turn it on, it's already on over there. And you can see the LED is not blinking. So we're going to be connecting the box itself and going to be looking at everything and how does it work and how does it perform with the emulation software. But let's take a close look at the main menu first. And we have so much stuff that we can actually play on this. Having autonomous wave, but how it actually will run with this new, a little bit more powerful chip, let's find out. So the previous one had like these massive hard drives and all kinds of weird shenanigans. This is not the case over here. We're also gonna be focusing on some N64, see how it actually runs now. Because with N64, most of the time, we're going to be needing actually a mini PC to get some overall good performance. And upscaling, I think at this point, it's still not something you should consider with these cheaper game boxes or TV game boxes. But there's absolutely a crazy amount of stuff we can play. So let's get into some more demanding stuff first or later on. And then we're going to be checking out what we can actually do with some other cool stuff like Neo Geo and arcade games. Oh yeah. <laughs> Another thing I wanted to do is checking out the settings. So let's go to system settings over here. If I'm pressing the right button. Information. So this is version 4.7. So in total having a 64 gigabyte stick. Temperatures are 46 Celsius at the moment. And we do have a CPU number count of 4 and in combination with the Mali 450 MP. Yeah, so it's kind of weird when the custom of the had like the G31 um, when it comes to the GPU. So it's kind of a step back, I'm guessing. However, that's actually what we're getting when it comes to, let's say, the software itself. 
but let's get into the gaming and let's have some fun. Old school games like the 8-bit 60-bit will run just fine, but let's get into the 60-bit Super NES. And the overall gaming is just, just fine, you know, these things run perfectly with the 8-bit 60-bit stuff. And I think you can even find game sticks that cost like $20 that can even run this now. So when it comes to playing those old, ga old school games, you have so much choice or get an old PC that costs almost nothing and slaps on but the Sierra on there. However, gameplay is just rough, I already mentioned, but let's get into some more stuff. Pressing select start will give you the option to bring back to the menu, pressing it twice by the way. And it will get you into the main menu where you can choose your game. With some explanation and screenshot, no movies. But I'm guessing with the movies, they will take up a lot of space. So that's something we most of the time, if they're going to be implementing it, they're doing it with a hard drive. And pressing A will start up a game. So one thing you need to do a little bit of on homework when it comes to, let's say, controlling the quick load, quick save. Yeah, you can actually do that by pressing the select and using the different buttons like the R1 and the L1. So you can just actually see that I made a quick save. So let's start racing. We can also do skipping like turbo mode. I love it. So much easier this way. You can just skip to the certain gameplay. And if something goes wrong, you can actually fairly easy go to the point where we have less left by selecting select and L1. And here you can see you go back to the place where we weren't. So at this point, you can even swap maybe between different, let's say, let's say emulator save folders. You can, let's say, mess around with the volume. You can even go crazy loud when it comes to that. And here you can see that we can even switch between slots, having slot number one and everything else. So, so you can see save state slots are absolutely amazing. You can just switch and, and, and I personally love the visual part when you're pressing select and start and having an option menu. But yeah, this is actually how it is when it comes to the emulator. I just wanted to do some testing with the Sega Dreamcast, but the unfortunate part is, so where the controller has been mapped into emulator, it doesn't work when it comes to some of the Dreamcast games or all of them at least. We can reset. But that is one of the many things that they fail to, to set everything up so you're ready to go and to play. So it's not going to be a great start when it comes to high end emulation. I mean, particularly when you're looking at setting stuff up, yeah, these things should be ready to go and adding new games to it. And but the unfortunate part is this is not like an overall solution that I've noticed that's going to be super convenient. I already mentioned before, it's like the Sega Dreamcast, I couldn't play any games, so we're going to be needing to deep dive. And also it's going to be some weird shenanigans going on with my controller. You can just feel some uh, delay, but it feels more something that is happening inside of the controller and actually trying to push two buttons at the same time. You can just see I'm trying to push right, but... So the controllers they're using are completely garbage. So do you know what I'm going to be doing? Not going to be using it anymore. And grab myself an Xbox 360 controller. Okay, so let's crank up the volume and move to a different controller to see if you have the same weird input lag. I don't notice it. So it was absolutely a problem of the controller itself. It's kind of a disappointment that they went for like the cheap PlayStation controllers like always. Because it's completely ruining the overall gaming experience. But yeah, I mentioned before, these game boxes are just fun for some Neo Geo, MAME. However, MAME is going to be with some limitation because Tekken, MAME and Killer Instinct won't run on this. I love my Xbox 360 controller, seriously. Such a great controller to play. But when it comes to PlayStation, there we do have overall just great over experience. And yeah, this has to do because it's just fine, you know, PlayStation 1 emulation native resolution runs great and many game sticks also has this overall great performance. So when it comes to, let's say, this Kinhank, it doesn't have extra value when it comes to that. It's kind of cool that it's on there, but we have seen a lot of game boxes that can actually do the same. So that's the thing with the new version and where this thing seems to be having a different chip in the inside. Yeah, overall performance is going to be significant the same. Particularly when it also comes to upscaling, I wouldn't recommend doing that. You should get yourself like a mini PC to actually have those overall performance. <laughs> I 
I wanted to see to actually run some PlayStation Portable, but the first game I tried already crashed. So yeah, that is how it goes. <clears throat> Let's close it. Let's try a different game. There's almost nothing on here. Let's try Hero Sparta. Let's see if that actually boots up. And let's see how the over emulation is. So where it comes to PlayStation Minis, those will have the option to run okay on these boxes. But it's quite a little bit disappointment, you know. With a new box, you expect to have at least like PlayStation Portable emulation. But also here, when you're going to be looking at it, it's going to be overall, let's say, a bad experience. Where I must say, and when it comes to, let's say, some of the games, like say the PlayStation Portable on mini PCs, there we do have like some great performance. I've seen like cheap game, let's say, let's say 90, the one on a dollar, let's say mini PCs. They had the option to even have 4K rendering resolution playing everything. So without any problem whatsoever. Oh, by the way, um, there is no audio in this game. So it seems to be running just fine. So there are a lot of cool mini games on there, but there is no audio. What a mess. The B-Rap Boys. I did play the game on the Sega Genesis called DJ Boy or something like that. But this is such a cool beat-em-up. It's completely something different. Here, I'm on a bicycle. <laughs> you know, when it comes to main games, they run just fine. I've been quite negative throughout this video, but it is a simple and good reason because it's going to be an absolutely like a problem with a lot of these boxes offering the brand new this and the brand new that, but the configuration is completely wrong. But also when it comes to performance, it's just disappointing. If you're going to be paying like say $20 or $30 for a box like this, it's okay, you know, and it plays a lot of like old school games like Mame Neo Geo that runs just fine. But besides that, no, it's especially a disappointment. There is nothing actually new in this mini, this game box when you're looking at, let's say, some other devices to be checked out. Okay. I do have this idea that it runs even worse than the previous time I tested it out on one of those, let's say, game boxes. Where I noticed, like, in the beginning we had some stuttering, but was it that awful? Oh, there we go. No. So yeah, this is a great example of the more demanding games that will not run on this game box. Even this thing is brand new version with a rock chip. It's just not enough to run N64. So let's move on to, for example, the world version. Because the world version is normally better playable. So this is just a great example that everything has been messed up in the emulation settings. So... Yeah, this game is also unplayable, but it's interesting that we have seen, let's say, basic, more like low run chips that runs this game perfectly. But for the people who are interested in this, let's plug it back in and let's get into the other part of the system, the Android. So let's boot it up without an SD card and I will show you what you're getting in the end. But if you're going to be removing the SD card, this is what you're getting. Yep, it's just a basic Android box, nothing fancy. So, I would not recommend using this. Uh, Linus Tech did a great video about it. The reason why is this going to be implementing for every box. I don't know. That's something you should decide for yourself. You can update it from there. Device, preference, and here we can find some overall information. Phone settings. We can implement, let's say, new apps. You can even do some emulations through here if you want to install them through the Google Play Store, didn't connect it to the internet because I'm not going to be doing that. I can be very quick about this. And when it comes to overall emulation performance, it's the same shenanigans that we've seen before. And there are like really cheap solutions out there. I mentioned a couple of times like a mini PC, but the Sierra will have so much better overall emulation performance than this tiny box. So yeah, the Android part, they tried to market like in the past with like Android functionality, but you need to keep removing the SD card and how good the quality is. I already mentioned these things get corrupted fairly easy. The controllers are awful. So this thing should be in a garbage bin. This is why I just like in half of the review, I'm using the Xbox 360 controller. I had a lot of delay and all kinds of craziness. The Android part didn't use it. So not going to be needing that. Thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing and just skip this product if you ask me. It would be great to see you in the next video.